I'm Ruth and I just bought this camper van to travel my home country of Scotland after living overseas for the past 12 years. This isn't the first vehicle I have owned in my life, but it is my first time purchasing a vehicle in the UK. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you the process of how I bought this camper van. Okay, so in this video today, I'm going to be sharing how I bought this camper van in the UK, why I bought this specific one, what did I look for when I purchased it, how I purchased it in terms of doing the deal with the previous owner, how I got insurance, how I got road tax, and also I will be sharing the cost of how much I spent to buy this 20 year old vehicle. So if you're like me and interested in purchasing a vehicle in the UK, purchasing a camper van in the UK, and you're not sure exactly how it all works, please watch this video to the end, you're going to find it really helpful. So after living in two camper vans, I knew I wanted this type of vehicle. I wanted a vehicle which I could stand up inside, but also park in regular parking spaces. This size of van is perfect for one person, especially on a rainy day, you might have to spend the whole day in the vehicle. So I think that's really important to consider. One of the key things to look for when purchasing a vehicle is the miles or the kilometers that have been driven and also the age of the vehicle. So this vehicle is 2001, so it's 22 years old. And also the miles on the clock were 92. I was looking for a vehicle which had around a hundred thousand on the clock. This vehicle is at Toyota Hyus. This is the first vehicle I've owned in the UK but the fourth vehicle I have owned in my life and all the vehicles that I have owned have been Japanese vehicles. I've always had a great experience with Japanese vehicles. They're very reliable and Toyota is a fantastic brand. Actually in the back of my mind, I knew that I wanted to get a Toyota Hyus. That's what I was searching for when I was looking online. Actually, I was open to other vehicles of different brands, but this was my first choice. So when I started looking for a vehicle, there were a few places. So I first joined Facebook groups. In the UK, there are lots of Facebook groups of people buying and selling camper vans. So I started looking there, people would post pictures of their camper vans. You can check more information and you can also ask questions in the comments. So that's a great place to look for camper vans. Second of all was on Facebook Marketplace. So I was looking in my local area, if there was anyone in this area selling camper vans. There were a few for sale, but the prices varied dramatically. The next place I was looking was a website called Auto Trader. I checked on there and eBay, which is an online marketplace available around the world. So people post vehicles on that too. I then found this camper van for sale on eBay. It had just been listed an hour before. There was a phone number for the person who was selling it on the eBay listing. And it said, please call if you have any questions. So I called him up. We spoke for about 20 minutes. He was telling me about all the adventures he'd been on with his friend who'd passed away, the one who had built out this van. So it was really nice to hear about him and we arranged for me to go the next day, the next morning to see the vehicle, give it a test drive and yeah, potentially purchase it. So the vehicle was located in Liverpool, which is around a four hour drive from where I live. So I had to wake up really early the next day, but I knew that this vehicle was likely to be the one and I drove all the way to Liverpool to go and see the vehicle. Okay, so when I went to see the vehicle, I had a list <laughs> of all these different things I wanted to check and make sure were working and any additional questions that I had. So I will read them out quickly. First one was air conditioning. Does the heater in the front and back work? How does the gas work for the cooker? Is there enough space on the roof for solar panels? I wrote down some measurements from Amazon that I saw and just checked when I was there if they would be able to fit. I wanted to know about the battery setup and wiring. Check if there were fuses and breakers. I wanted to know about the fridge, how it was powered. I wanted to test all the sockets in the van, make sure they are working. I wanted to see the water tanks, fresh water, grey water. Are they hooked up and operational? I wanted to know if the leisure batteries were possible to charge by alternator charging. I checked all the doors, make sure they all open and close correctly and also that they lock. Checked under the vehicle very thoroughly for rust, specifically around the wheel areas. I checked the tires. I checked if the passenger seat was spinning round. I checked if there was enough space to put in a toilet. I also checked all the storage areas to make sure there'd be enough space for my things. I checked if the vehicle was four wheel drive, which it's not. I checked all the lights and asked how they're all hooked up. I took the vehicle for a test drive, checked for any lights coming on in the dashboard and any strange sounds or feelings when I was driving it. I checked inside the engine and I also asked if it was a 24 volt or 12 volt vehicle system. This is important if you're going to be adding in a leisure battery which is hooked up to the alternator. Checked if there was a fan for cooking, fan or extraction vent. I checked the length of the vehicle to make sure it was okay for me to drive and that it would fit into regular parking spaces. I checked for USB sockets so that I could charge my phone, which there weren't. I 
also asked what the vehicle was registered as, so it's registered as a camper van instead of a regular van. I also checked about the MOT when that was due next and before going to see the vehicle you can actually type the registration into the DVLA website and you can check the next MOT date, when the previous MOT was and also any problems that were happening during the previous MOT. I know that might have felt like an information overload but I think it's probably helpful for people who want to buy a camper van not only in the UK but anywhere in the world. I've written out all these points I checked plus a few more extras into a free checklist which you can download through the link in the video description below. So when I went to see the camper van on the Friday morning it had been listed on the Thursday the day before so I was the first person to go and see it on the Friday morning and while I was there the man's phone was constantly ringing and he said it was other people calling from eBay wanting to see the van. So maybe he was just saying that, maybe he's just a really popular guy, but I felt like it was a very good deal, it was a very good van, so I kind of thought if I don't buy it today, someone else is. Okay, so the reservations I had about purchasing this vehicle, there were a few. First one was the electricity system, there's no ledger battery or 12 volt system apparently set up in this van so that was something that held me back but I knew that I could do that myself I have experience doing that with the bus conversion so the investment for that might be between 500 to 1000 pounds it will also add value to the vehicle if I do sell it eventually and the next thing was the water system it's not hooked up I also thought I could do that myself uh, add in a 12 volt power source and that will power the, the pump and the tap inside the sink. The third thing is the bed. The bed is not the biggest. It's probably quite spacious for one person, but for two people, it's a bit tight. It would be possible to do an extension on this bed. However, um, I'll need to come up with some sort of design. And then was the fridge. The fridge wasn't really working properly, but it's possible to get another fridge that space here is quite an average size for a camper van fridge so it's possible to buy another one second hand online or new and fit it in there power it with 12 volt electricity so yeah so those were my four reservations before purchasing the vehicle but they're all possible to fix and I felt like the van was 90% perfect so I decided to go for it so I made an offer for the vehicle he then offered to drive the vehicle from Liverpool up to the north of England and then we would meet there and do the handover. So he charged an extra £100 to cover the cost of that. In order to get him to take it off eBay, I had to pay him a £1,500 deposit. So I did that via bank transfer in front of him and then also sent him the screenshot. So we arranged the date to meet the following week. He drove up to the north of England in the vehicle and then I took the train to the same place and we met there. He arrived in the vehicle and then I did the remaining bank transfer in front of him, showed him the confirmation of the transfer and then basically gave me the keys and that was it and he took the train back to Liverpool. So between me seeing the vehicle and also doing the handover, the owner actually put four new tyres on the car so all the tyres are now new too. Before going to pick up the vehicle I sorted out the road tax and insurance for the vehicle. I paid for the road tax for six months so that was around £150 and then I set up insurance with a company called Adrian Flux. I called around about eight different companies but they offered the best price. They were very communicative and getting back to me with the quote and they could also include breakdown cover onto their quotation. So it was around £400 to go with them for a year so that includes full coverage, um, fully comprehensive insurance for myself and also my mum to drive this vehicle and then also breakdown cover anywhere in the UK and also in Europe. One more thing if you're interested to also buy a vehicle in the UK there is one form that you need to fill in which will have the signature of the previous owner you send it off and then you receive a new paper through which confirms that you're the new registered owner of the vehicle and I received that yesterday so I am the new owner of this vehicle the camper van Ernie so probably what everybody wants to know is how much was this camper van I ended up paying 6,600 with the delivery to the north of England I was really happy with this price the camper van fulfilled a lot of my criteria specifically with being able to stand up inside the size of the vehicle and also I wanted a Toyota Hyus and it's already converted into a camper van. I am very happy with the price I paid for this vehicle so I'm interested to know your thoughts too. Is it a good deal? Is it not? Please leave a comment below.
Thank you for watching this video. I hope me sharing my experience of purchasing this camper van in the UK was helpful and you learned some tips and tricks on what to look for when you purchase your own camper van. I'll be sharing lots more camper van content and my travels around Scotland here on this channel. So please subscribe so you don't miss it. Bye.